Welcome back, I'm playing Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector, and I thought it might be interesting just to show off some of this uh, units here and then just kind of discuss them as I've been playing a lot of online matches and I've been getting a couple of questions on uh, different units and uh, kind of would show off what they look like now that we got a 3D rendering uh, and kind of go through the units. So um, this is your lieutenant. He's kind of like your basic commander unit uh, with these different structures here uh, and colors with the army selection. Uh, you get to choose your points. It's always up in this corner here. Um, tells you what kind of faction you have. Uh, this breaks down the statistics here. This would be the name if you were creating a new army. So just, you know, Blood Angels, and then you add something on here. This is the unit. Um, it's a little frustrating with the Blood Angels when you're selecting units on here, because if you haven't used up the points, if you keep selecting the same one, it'll keep trying to give them the same loadout, whether you want it to be there or not. Uh, but I'll just kind of go through each of the factions here and see what I can provide for some feedback on things. So, uh, Lieutenant, as we were discussing here, he's a jump pack infantry, so he's got great movement. He can use the jump pack assault. The thing that's nice about the jump pack assault that I sometimes forget is that when you use this, it doesn't trigger uh, pistol overwatches. So if you're sitting there jumping against other um, assault infantry or other lieutenants, other units that have... Uh, the bolt pistol or other um, pistols that have automatic overwatches could do use the assault infantry to do that because if you don't and you try to do a charge attack with any other units it'll trigger an automatic overwatch and if they get suppressed then you're just screwed because they get rid of your overwatch and you may end up not being able to drop into the um, range that you want to be and it'll waste resources so he's actually pretty good with his mastercrafted bolt pistol here so he can do some good damage if for whatever reason you wanted to switch him to be a range uh, you could give him the inferno pistol which is even better it has more armor piercing as you can see uh, you know it has six attacks um, six to eight ballistic damage three um, armor piercing I think most players almost always use the bolt pistol because uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to give him uh, the Inferno Pistol. The reason being is his attacks have armor piercing, unless you're, like, for some reason stuck in melee. Um, it And you don't want to trigger an Overwatch. It's not worth it, and it only does 30 to 60 damage. And this will have a, hot, a lot higher rate of suppression than the Inferno Pistol does. So, really, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen somebody on multiplayer use the Inferno Pistol kit. Uh, most players will use the default chain sword. Uh, it's got good armor piercing. It has splash damage, which is what um, that times one, so it'll spread. So when you hit, it'll do the base damage, and then it'll splash to one other unit, uh, which is what that uh, one means there, and that'll get hit for 19 to 27 damage. And then he has two attacks, so he'll hit uh, the base damage there twice, and then do the splash damage twice. Uh, his second option is the thunder hammer here and this is nice because it does a lot of splash damage to it and he also has a pretty decent base attack so if you miss the base attack then you're in trouble because you've only had one attacks whereas if the chainsword you have two so because uh, if you end up missing an attack then you get an automatic counter attack or if you attack a unit in melee and you don't kill it then it gets to have a retaliatory attack for you so chainsword you know does pretty good damage thunder hammer costs a lot more does even higher damage and then it has the splash times three so if you're fighting things like uh, termagants or scarabs then this will be able or other uh, gretchen then the splash damages will actually kill like four models per swing so you can really get rid of that uh, weak um, bodied units that just have a lot of different units in there so it helps you just with wave clearing 40 points is a expensive upgrade but he also does a bunch of damage so it probably is worth it and then he has two actions so you get to attack twice um, so all very nice so jump pack we kind of talked about that the movement you wouldn't want to use that if you're going to be doing your range tactical precision uh, especially if he's your unit commander you probably don't want to throw him into uh, melee damage and sacrifice him unless you absolutely have to so you can keep occurring the command points because they're very powerful for the space marines uh, so if you're trying to keep them protected you can use this tactical precision which works great for say hell blasters when they're using their sniping attack because uh, it just adds extra armor piercing, adds extra accuracy, and then they can just get a shit ton of damage done on there. The other thing that a lot of people like to do is if you're starting out and then have a bunch of jump infantry or um, these 
uh, sanguinary, what are they called, the sanguinaries? Sanguinary guard, yeah. Um, you can go ahead and use this. They'll get 50% momentum gains for two turns, and then if you end up giving, stacking that with the sanguinary priests, uh, embrace the blood, which gives 40 momentum straight up, then you can end up, if you're killing a unit, you can end up uh, getting bonus attacks right at the start there, so that can really allow you to do a shit ton of damage. Um, his other ability is a Sword of Sanguinius. I guess I personally haven't really found that to be very useful. I guess if you really wanted to kill something and you just needed that additional movement and wanted to use up one of your AP on it, that would certainly be something that you could do. Um, but like I said, for me, I just haven't found it to be very useful, but it could definitely be helpful in certain situations. And then the army cohesion, I don't think I discussed that, but when you're making armies and playing games, it'll say, does this require cohesive armies or not? Most, I would say probably 95%, if 90 to 95% of the games require cohesive armies, it just stops you from being like, okay, I'm just going to spam a whole Terminator army or something like that. And the other benefit that it has is by following cohesion, you get more um, momentum, which allows your guys to then get an extra attack when they uh, end up getting the momentum bonus, or they can get more damage uh, with their accuracy and crits. So each faction has its own momentum bonuses, and then most units will end up getting an additional move um, move point as well. So I, if you're wanting to move somebody in, make sure you move them before you surge and use your extra attack point because if you use it and then you'll lose the movement if you take that so it'll kind of mess you up on the order of operations. Um, the other thing that it'll allow you to do is you can get the extra AP or you can uh, empower one of your abilities so like if you want to empower tactical precision it gives more accuracy and more armor piercing I think. Um, this would give more momentum bonuses. Uh, with the priest here it gives a super heal so there's lots of different options. Uh, next commander unit is the Librarian. He's an amazing unit. Uh, he's got a Mastercrafted Bolt Pistol, really no options to change here, and he's got the Force Sword. The thing that makes him amazing uh, is he has three attacks. And so if you get him in against most units, he's going to get attacks, he's going to do splash damage, as you see it splashes the two, dam uh, two different units, and he's got armor piercing of eight. So this guy is good in melee against everybody. And then the other thing that a lot of players will do is you can spam this Wing of Sanguinius. It only has a one turn cooldown. It does take up one of your action points, but it gives him more movement, it gives him ranged armor, and it gives him invasion. So he can pretty much just jump in. Everybody shoots their overwatch on this guy. Uh, he stays alive, he gets in there, damages everybody, and then the rest of the assault marines end up following him in because now they've used up their overwatch. You don't need to worry about getting uh, suppressed and he can run in there and just mess everything up. And if you end up empowering, you can empower either the Angelic Fury, which uh, does 20 momentum damage to all units within two tiles, and it does psychic damage uh, to everybody around there, so you can do a bunch of damage there. Otherwise, the other options you can do is you can do the Bloody Lance, which is more of a range. Um, goes in a straight line here, so it goes for the splash damage and can hit up to with an armor piercing of two up to six units per tile so uh, definitely does good damage this guy is just an all-around good unit again has two action points as you imagine that's effectively six attacks with two uh, splash damage so this guy can just dish out the damage like nobody's business and then because he's in melee uh, he can lock down range units and he's hard to hit especially if you used your wings of sanguineous to jump over there because he hit, then has the evasion so he gets up to an evasion level 35 the next commander unit is the Librarian Dreadnought. These guys are great as well. Um, they're at all these heroes that are single units, which effectively are all heroes. Um, you just have to be careful because they can be easily sniped. Uh, but the thing that's nice about these guys is their vehicle, so they can easily be healed up by the Tech Marine. They can get exceptional armor from the Tech Marine. Um, they've got a nice uh, force halibur damage so these guys if you get flanks they can do a bunch of damage they can also solo units and they have kind of a weak storm bolter so it can kill uh, weak units uh, but really with an armor piercing one it's not going to do much damage against um, you know heavier upgraded units 
that have higher armor, so then you're going to be using them mostly for your melee. The thing that's nice about the Librarian Dreadnought is he also has special abilities. Uh, as he does count as a vehicle, you need to be careful, because if he explodes, he'll do 50 to 70 damage with armor piercing a 3 to everything around him, including your own unit. So just be careful with that, because you can easily mess him up by using these guys next to each other and around a bunch of infantry, because uh, you can just damage all your units. He has the Quickening, which is probably the most commonly used ability for the Librarian Dreadnought. Gives him 3 movement uh, to plus 10 evasion, and you can really cover a lot of distance. Uh, if you are locking in a bunch of ranged units, you could end up using Shifting Sands, uh, which will uh, cause them to have less evasion, less movement points, increases their chance of getting suppressed. Uh, so then they can't escape as easily. And then he has a Shield of Sanguinius, which is also one of his most commonly used abilities. You give a unit plus one, or plus 25% uh, bonus HP and uh, melee armor. So can definitely be a great ability to put on a unit and then charge them in to suffer a bunch of overwatch shots, especially if they're a high HP unit. So that way they effectively don't take any damage when soaking up that overwatch. So these are always great units to use. Next unit is the Sanguinary Priest. So these guys are great. Most people want to use them as their commander can just kind of keeping them in the back row to uh, heal units as necessary. So again, he has two action points. He's got a chain sword, so he can definitely defend himself, um, do some decent damage, but you don't want to, he's not really meant to be in the melee. And then he has your Mastercrafted Bolt to Pistol. Big ability for him is he has the ability to heal um, for 35 HP, and that's every unit that's in a squad. So he can do great damage here. He can do great healing there, especially and it gets even higher if you empower. He has the Righteous Exoration uh, ability. So if you're sitting there surrounded by a bunch of Assault Infantry or Terminators you're about to end up teleporting in, you want to click this give everybody plus 25 melee damage for two turns and then you want to stack up the momentum and then if you add uh, the other graces of angel uh, bonus then like I said if, you get, if you're getting kills on those overwatches or not overwatches on those jump then you can just score a bunch of extra attacks and you can just really do a shit ton of damage and heavily lock down enemy forces because now you've locked them in the melee so your range, the ranged units that you're jumping aren't going to be able to do as much damage their accuracy is going to fall down they can't move without getting suffering an attack and you can just really take out a lot of high value targets that way next unit is the tech marine he can heal vehicles for 75 HP for a standard heal, or if you were to empower, you can heal for twice that, I believe. He's got the Blessing of the Unmessiah, which allows you to stack additional ranged and melee armor onto a vehicle. Uh, and all these things all last one turn. Or one of the most powerful abilities is the Invoke the Machine Spirit, which adds accuracy and damage. So if you play, most people will want to place that onto one of their predators. You run him in there, he can effectively snipe a hero almost all by himself unless it's a highly armored unit. So like it wouldn't be able to take out another Dreadnought, but it could pretty easily kill probably any of these other four commanders if you just drove them up there and got those shots onto them. So a great, great unit. He also has a power axe that does some decent damage so he can protect himself. But again, he's an easy guy to snipe down. He's got 180 health and two action points, just like all these commander units do. So that's what the yellow means. Kind of moving on to purple, this represents your elite units. So Terminators are your elite units. The thing that makes them special is they have the ability to do a Terminator deep strike. So you can effectively move them 10 tiles and then you can have their regular movement on top of that. Um, if you are not going to be soaking out, you have to be very careful with the Terminators though because they're surprisingly easy to suppress even though they're got a armor of eight. And so I really get kind of annoyed with the suppression system in this game because, uh, you know, Thornbacks, which are a big uh, Tyranid unit, and then a bunch of little pistol shots will sit there and suppress them. And what happens if you're running in forward and trying to cause damage because you want to charge to a charge attack, which 
gives you extra movement and extra damage gives you a chance of pushing the unit back uh, if you overwhelm them uh, so there's reasons that you'd want to do a charge attack but if you get suppressed halfway through your charge and you just stop where you're at you minus you lose movement and you're not going to be able to get an attack on there so you effectively mess yourself up most people are going to use the thunder hammer and storm shield kit with uh the terminators and the reason for that is you get additional armor so that brings them up to eight armor here and they get 10 percent less damage received they have the thunder hammer and storm shield which is just a beautiful uh unit here uh thing here because you can just smack a bunch of other enemies and do a bunch of damage uh, the thing you have to be careful with the terminator deep strike is you get a minus 25 percent melee damage but if you buff them with some of these other things that we had talked about you can nullify that uh, loss the other way you can kit them out is with the uh, lightning claws and the advantage of them is you have multiple attacks so you don't need to worry about them missing their attack and they can do splash damage but the splash damage is pretty small so because of the bonuses here with the armor bringing it up to nine and then the minus damage for only 30 points most people are going to want to use them as just teleporting and locking units down slamming a bunch of damage in and just kind of totally hampering a bunch of units because at an armor of nine uh, lower armor piercing weapons aren't even going to be able to touch these guys especially with uh, minus 10 percent damage that happens there so overall just great unit to use and just got to be careful with the teleport and they only have one you're going to do it one time for the entire battle so just keep that in consideration that you want to use it but most people will use these guys to teleport in do a bunch of damage and then uh, soak up kills or they'll attack with range units and then teleport these guys and get the kills and then if they've stacked up momentum to be able to get additional second attacks on there so definitely a fun unit to play around with all right moving on to the next elite unit for the blood angels is the sanguinary guard these are your elite jump infantry units here um, they have several several different ways of kidding themselves out kind of the first option ooh, voice cracked is their default uh, bolt gun these have a lot of attacks but as you can see they do minimal damage they've got very low armor piercing so they're effectively used for wave clearing a bunch of weak low tier infantry like Gretchen or uh, Termagon, Swarmagons, things like that, but are going to really struggle against anything that's got more than a few armor points and so just decide whether you, how you want to use it um, and how many points you end up having. If you're short points then keep it as the default otherwise what I find is a lot of players will end up giving them the plasma pistols and the reason for that is the plasma pistols actually got a pretty high chance to uh, suppress units so a lot of people like to do that uh, as their default so that way it stops them from getting jumped by uh, another assault infantry after they do that and uh, to get charged attack especially if you're fighting against other space marines and you're worried you're not going to be the one that gets the jump attack I have seen a few people give them the infernal pistols uh, you know there's five units in a squad so that's effectively five uh, attacks here with an armor piercing of six uh, for 30 to 40 damage so you're talking about 150 to 200 damage assuming that they all hit uh, but I can't say I see a lot of people do that I would say I see more of the plasma pistol or even more people do the uh, default bolt gun because the main area that these units shine is in melee so if you're short on money people will use the sword has two attacks armor piercing of seven uh, so that allows them to do quite a bit of damage but most people are actually going to end up using the encarmine axe here and it has additional armor piercing it only has one attack but it has armor piercing of eight so most people will do a charge attack with the jump pack they will most likely give him a boost and some players especially if you're using your um, commander or librarian uh, to get them into melee will then stack it with um, the uh, hairs of 
Ascalon, I think is how you say it. And the reason for that is you can jump attack, you can get an additional attack if you've buffed them with the ways that we talked about it. They'll get a kill, and they can. these guys can uh, take out vehicles with their armor piercing of 8, you know, because that's 5 attacks. So you're talking about 150 uh, to 250 uh, damage here. So it's a little bit of a wider variation, but they can do a shit ton of damage. And then when they use this airs ability, it increases their accuracy farther. It gives them a 15% critical chance hit. And per model that they end up killing, you get a 25% chance to gain an AP. Now this, and this effect will double if they're next to an adjacent unit, like say the librarian who may have jumped in there first to soak up that overwatch with the uh, wings of Sanguinius that we already talked about. So then, you know, you get to here, you get an extra AP, you kill, you kill again, or you get kills, you get, you end up getting an extra AP, you attack again, you wipe out the unit, and now all of a sudden you have extra, uh, another attack, so a third attack potentially, if you had given them the momentum bonus and uh, the momentum here with the uh, chalice. So that's a way that you can do a shit ton of damage with these guys on the uh, first attack, assuming you're lucky enough to uh, weaken units down to make sure you end up getting the kills with these guys here. So definitely a excellent, excellent unit here. Um, I find these to be used much, much more frequently than the Terminators are because these guys can are regular jump infantry, right? Well, I should say they're elite jump infantry. So you can use this jump ability in the unlimited amount of times so they th that's the big bonus for these guys and then stacking it with the hairs they can do quite a bit of damage uh, next elite unit is the furioso dreadnought i personally really like the furiosos uh, i use them quite a bit most players do not um, the way I almost always kit it out is I don't give them the Storm Bolter. Uh, we kind of talked about that with the uh, Librarian Dreadnought, that I'm just not a huge fan of it. Good against really weak infantry, but otherwise not very good. What I almost always have them kitted out with is with the Heavy Flamer. It has a range of two. Uh, it does a shit ton of damage to pretty much all infantry other than heroes uh, because it doesn't have a lot of armor piercing, but you can easily kill out if you have, you know, two Hormigons, um, Necrons, any of those things in front of you that you're using this flame attack on with just low tier infantry, you'll get a kill. Obviously it won't get the kill on other Space Marines because they have too high of armor, but pretty much any other faction, you're going to get a kill against their basic infantry using the Heavy Flamer. Uh, I would find that other players will also consider using these as an anti-vehicle kit, which will then use these Meltaguns, uh, which do 130 to 180 damage. I personally find that I just use Hell Blasters and things. Uh, instead, so for these guys, I really want to do the heavy flamers to do wave clears of low tier infantry and then lock other infantry in the melee so that when it blows up, it does damage to them. Alternatively, you can use their fists, it does have splash damage, um, so it can do some decent damage, but Again, using the Heavy Flamer, I think, is a much more effective way of doing this. Consider the Melta Gun if you want to use it uh, as a pure anti-vehicle hunter. Um, the other ability it has is a Frag Cannon. Uh, it has two ammunition for this, and again, it's good for clearing low-tier infantry without a lot of armor, because it only has two armor piercing here. Um, but it, uh, it fires the three grenades, which effectively means it has three attacks, so it'll do between 45 and 60 damage. Uh, to units with armor piercing of two, so low tier infantry, it's going to be able to kill them or significantly injure them. So, uh, but these guys are easily able to be sniped down, so you just got to be a little bit careful with them, which is why most other players don't like to use them. But for me, this is I consider this one of the core units to my build typically. The next unit is the aggressors. Um, they're good units, they've got decent armor, they're not crazy expensive. I did not find them to be used by most players uh, for a long long time but now they tend to be getting, I seem to see them getting more play time now which is good to see. So you have kind of two different kits for these guys. You have the Boltstorm Gauntlets which are not very good. So I don't think I've ever seen a multiplayer match where somebody has equipped the Boltstorm Gauntlets. You know, the thing that's nice about them is they do do an automatic overwatch. So if somebody was to be charging them, assuming it's not an assault infantry with a jump pack where it won't trigger, um, 
but say it's against uh, the basic Tyranid units, it would. Uh, and that will do pretty decent damage. But what most people instead will do is they're going to give them the Bolt Storm Gauntlets. Uh, they are expensive. It's 20 points, but this is effectively a flame unit here. And now all of a sudden it's going to do 20 to 30 damage with an armor piercing of 3. Uh, it only has one range, so you're not going to be shooting through guys like you will with the Dreadnoughts because these flamers have a range of 2. But uh, you can do a pretty good amount of damage to other infantry units and really mess them up. And then they have a weaker um, Fragstorm Grenade Launcher. Uh, I, it's not great. Um, it does splash damage. It's a free attack. But the sisters are just way, way better with their grenade launcher. So it just feels kind of kind of bad to have such an inferior grenade launcher compared to the sisters um, but that is kind of their big bonus and then the other thing to keep in consideration is if you run them in there and they still have extra melee or not, not extra melee extra movement then you can end up uh, using this hail of fire which just gives you four additional attacks for every uh, movement point uh, spent so that's how you can really get these flamestorm gauntlets to do more damage or I suppose you could get more shots with uh, the bolt storm, but like I said, most people do not use the bolt storm. Most people want to use the frag gauntlets or the flame storm gauntlets. And then the other advantage that these guys have is so you close the distance, you uh, take out the weak infantry that are trying to act as a screen for the high tier units, and then you can run them in and do melee damage, which for whatever reason it's not showing as an option. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. So then this is their base of damage, and so it's, you know, you have three units, it's one attack, but then because it has an armor piercing of eight, these guys can just run in there and just beat the shit out of vehicles and other heroes and things and do a decent amount of damage um, against heavily armored units. So it's like, use them for the flame storm to get into combat, get rid of the screens, and then lock units down and do a good amount of damage uh, using your melee com uh, abilities here. So good unit, not widely used. I'm glad it's starting to have a little bit of a comeback, but I think that's typically how most units, no, most players will use it. Um, then we're moving into kind of just our standard infantry, nothing special unit here. Um, because it's Space Marines, they all have decent amount of armors here, but this one also has one attack, whereas these guys also have an, one attack, one attack, one attack. I don't think I said one AP for these guys, but I'm sure you were able to deduce that from here. So the next unit would be the intercessors these are kind of your uh, bread and butter infantry units I can't say I see a lot of people kit them out with a regular bolt rifle um, the bolt rifles advantage it has a little extra armor piercing and then if you end up using the battlefield battle line tactics they get extra range damage uh, in the exchange for suffering more melee damage I would say it's much more common to see them with these bolt guns because they have you know twice the amount of attacks they only suffer one uh, maximum damage here. Uh, the range is a little worse, whereas this is a range of three, this is a range of two, but it's got 80% uh, accuracy as a base, and then when you use this, you get uh, a bunch of extra damage and things on there. So I'd find that most people typically want to do the auto bolt rifle, unless you're fighting things like the Necrons or higher armored units, then you'd probably do the bolt rifle. And then they have a grenade. So again, really good at clearing things like Scarabs or Gretchen, things like that, but other uh, maybe even some weak Tyranids. But this is one of the weaker grenades in the game, so it's not going to regularly clear uh, low tier units sale it compared to the orcs so definitely using your bolt rifle bolt rifle is going to be the better option but if you're locked down and can't get shots off then you could use your fray grenades next unit is the hell blaster these are effectively your anti-armor units here and they are amazing at clearing them out and so you have kind of two different loadouts the first one is the plasma incinerator the advantage to these is it's also can be used as an anti-infantry with an armor piercing of six so this would be good against taking out your you know aggressors pretty 
decent damage against your vehicles, um, fires lots of shots, so if you have lots of model counts and you're shooting them into those infantry, it won't just be one shot, one kill, or what will happen is they'll all end up triggering the same unit if you end up using the heavy plasma incinerator here. Each unit will just fire at one unit, so you know if there's like seven units in the squad it'll only kill one of those seven because it won't the game won't be like oh we're gonna definitely uh kill one unit with each one of these shots let's all fire somewhere else um the game will definitely overkill on these abilities um but this is how you end up doing a shit ton of damage to vehicles because uh, this one as you can see four attacks with six to eight uh, compared to one attack at 41 to 55 additional armor piercing it's got better range and then you can supercharge these guys which is how you can almost one shot a vehicle and that gives you 30 percent extra range damage additional armor piercing um, but in exchange you have a 45 percent chance of your models taking 40 damage that's not enough to kill a model by itself but if they suffer damage it is so most people want to keep a sanguinary uh, priest by them so then they can heal and then like I said you get those additional buffs and you give it a little bit of tactical uh, precision as well and oh man you can do some real damage with these guys and like I said effectively one shot some vehicles the next unit is the assault squad I personally think these guys hit way above their price range so what's probably the most common uh, loadout for Space Marines is most players will get the maximum amount of assault squads that they're allowed to per the match that they end up getting for the points. Uh, the reason is they have the chain swords just like the other chain swords that we looked at so they do decent damage against infantry and vehicles. Uh, most people will end up using the bolt pistols some people use the hand flamers uh, against tyranids if they're doing a bunch of low tier stuff i guess they can do some good damage because the hand flamers will also trigger an automatic overwatch but typically you're not using these guys for their ranged ability you're using these for guys for melee and to lock guys down so very few people will do that they also have the ability to use an inferno pistol which you know could be good it's only 20 extra points but these guys are not meant to be like I said, uh, range units. These are meant to be melee brawlers here. Uh, their main advantages here are the, the jump packs. Again, you can use this a limited amount of time. It's only got a two turn cooldown. Gives you extra movement. Uh, they've got crack grenades, which they have two ammunition of. Uh, just crazy. These guys can be so frustrating to play against. So what they'll effectively do is they'll either use their jump packs to jump on to higher elevation where you can't shoot them and then they can lob their grenades uh, within three tiles and take out your anti-vehicles or your vehicles because they do 60 to 90 with additional splash damage so it's not uncommon to see them do anywhere from 60 to 120 damage um, and these are going to be very because of the armor piercing of seven they're really good at also sniping heroes uh, from afar and they do full damage so let's say you jump in you do the attacks you get your kills, but then there's like one model left. You can jump them away and then throw a crack grenade, and then they can do, you know, 60 to 120 damage to vehicles. So they can definitely hit above their rank here. And then the other thing that really improves these guys is they have this assault tactics. And this is what makes them to be the best between the crack grenades and these assault tactics. This is why these guys are, in my opinion, under cost because they can do a bunch of damage you sit there and do this you get 15 percent melee accuracy you do 50 percent more damage yeah they take more range damage in exchange but who really cares because hopefully you're going to be locking guys down and so all of a sudden you're almost you know getting the 50 percent damage here doing all these bonuses here getting increased chance to hit if they lose models jump them away throw some crack grenades for the rest of the match just an absolute nightmare so these are definitely a unit that you want to end up getting as many kills as you wiping out the whole squad or else they're going to really make you pay for it with the crack grenades i've lost many many matches because one assault mar i wipe out you know almost wipe out three squads but each squad has you know one unit barely alive and all three of them throw their crack grenades out after they've already attacked my infantry with the jump and they end up taking my vehicles out so it's just a little a little too OP for only 70 points and you can get a, a large amount of these guys I think these are actually the 
most prolific assault jump infantries that you can get in the game because I think it's much more than the storm boys which are the orc equivalent which are far inferior um, the orcs have more HP but they don't have as much armor they don't have this ability here so definitely a big nightmare unit here that you'll be fighting a lot the more elite counterpart to this is the death company now, ironically, even though these are the more elite version of the Assault Squad, the Death Company is rarely utilized. Why? Because they don't have the crack grenade spam that we just discussed. They don't have the Assault Tactics Doctrine, which we had just discussed. What these guys' main advantage are is they have the Black Rage. And what that is, is when you kill a squad, uh, kill end up using them to kill an enemy model then they can get additional melee damage. They suffer some range penalties and they get less evasion so they, these guys can build up some momentum and start to be major damage dealers. Um, they have slightly, oh, but they have the same amount of armor. For some reason I thought they had a little more armor, but that's not true. Um, they do have 25% or 25 extra health. Um, so if you use these guys to uh, jump into melee, the, and you get kills with them, then you can really stack up a bunch of damage with their chain swords here. But generally, it's just not considered to be worth it. And I guess they also have two attacks compared to the one with these guys. But it's not a, it, so if they miss, it's not the end of the world because they get a second attack. But in terms of the total damage, unless you start stacking up the black rage, um, it doesn't make a lot of sense. In most jump infantry, you jump in, you get attacks, you harass guys, and then the enemy will focus and kill them so the assault squad is just a much better option because you'll jump in there and you'll get the extra melee accuracy and you'll get the uh, bonus damage just right from the start instead of having to try to keep these guys alive and then trying to get the damage that way so that's why and they're cheaper costs so this is why the assault squad is considered to be superior to the death company the next option is the Inceptors. I have very mixed feelings about these guys. Uh, they are good. They have seven armor, so weak infantry can sometimes have a little bit of trouble damaging them. I don't like the Assault Bolter. I find that this is just a very, very weak weapon. Yes, it can do a bunch of shots. So again, against the lowest of the low tier infantry that has no armor, they can do some decent damage. But I find that most people are going to end up giving them the Plasma Exterminator. And what's nice about this is uh, it has Overwatch abilities. It counts as a lockdown. So if you put this range unit next to a unit and they try to move away, they'll act as a melee unit where they'll then shoot into them like they were getting an uh, attack, uh, a zone of control attack. Um, which is really nice. Unfortunately, when you use the jump pack to jump in there, it causes them to lose some accuracy. Um, the other advantage that these guys have is these are the units that have the death from above trait, so they can do a lot of splash damage um, against low tier armored units. So you sit there, you jump in, they get a little bit heavier, you want to take out another unit like, a, say, Gretchen, you can jump these guys out and then do splash damage or, you know, scarabs. That way you don't need to worry about shooting into them with the uh, ranged attacks here. And they have good survivability. So that's kind of these guys' main advantage is being they'll jump in, do some good range damage with an armor piercing of five. They can do pretty decent damage against all units, including vehicles. And then you can jump them out. They can capture points, but they are expensive because if you're kidding them out this way, this is now 140 points. So this is the Predator Ball, and this is the backbone of any Space Marine army. And the reason for that is there's kind of two different ways to get this out. One is the Twin Assault Cannon, which is an amazing weapon because it has 100 attacks. It has an armor piercing of 4, so it's going to effectively deal damage to any unit it attacks. The other option is to give it the Flamestorm Cannon. I would say probably 80% of the matches you're going to be fighting this. And then the other 20%, and it's usually if you're playing against a Necron, you'll consider giving the Flamestorm Cannon. The reason is with the Necrons that uh, most of their infantry squads have five or six models. And when you attack, 
you every time they have a unit die they usually have like a 30 to 40 percent chance to resurrect a model one or two models uh, per attack so let's say you're fighting that you use a flamestorm cannon it has a range of two so you can end up if there are two units next to it you can shoot through them and you can potentially wipe out two whole squads of necrons then let's say two of the units resurrect from one squad they don't resurrect at all from the other one so now you effectively used up the two unit resurrection on the one squad you attacked and the second unit is now totally annihilated so then you can attack with the second unit take out those two models no more resurrection will occur because you've already hit that resurrection camp say and compared to this which let's say you're attacking you can only attack one squad you attack with all these hundred attacks let's say you take out three models okay out of those five or six let's say five for this example so there's two models there let's say one resurrects with that chance so now it's back to three models so now not only do you, do you only attack one unit there's more models there to see and then you attack with a second unit take out those three units because it two units didn't resurrect like on before it now has a chance to resurrect again so then that unit that necron unit now instead of you've only taken one squad out compared to two with those two unit attacks and there's still a unit left so that's how you would appropriately use the flamestorm cannon uh, so i hope that makes sense uh, it's really about just killing a bunch of units and then uh, with the necrons or if you're fighting tyranids a lot or i guess even orcs right now but the orcs can do pretty good amount of damage to the predator so I'd just be careful with that um, but uh, if you're using a if you're playing a swarm player with tyranids then I would consider doing the flamestorm cannon as well for again being able to kill two models uh, two different squads out and then that'll get them to overwatch quicker so and then the other advantage that these guys have is no matter what uh, kit you use here They'll both come with the Storm Bolter, which is a free attack every two turns. Uh, good for mopping up units that just quite haven't been taken out yet. The nice ability that you have with these guys is you have the Lucifer Pattern Engine, plus two movement at a little bit of a sacrifice with your speed, or not your speed, your range stability. But again, if you're using your Tech Marine to invoke the Machine Spirit, you totally nullify that. And then like all vehicles, they have a chance of exploding uh, on death. The next units are the land speeder and then a land speeder tornado variant. So the land speeder, these are kind of your backbone to your strategic command, uh, command other than your assault jump marines to be able to move all around the battlefield. Big thing is you don't want them to get locked down because they'll trigger overwatch, they can be suppressed. Um, they have a heavy bolter which does decent damage with an armor piercing of 3 so it'll be able to do some damage against pretty much everything has 20 attacks. The alternative method is because these guys have a movement of 6 you can use them as a highly mobile anti-vehicle platform. Um, so if I was facing the Space Marines I'd probably use this loadout with the multi melta because it has a range of three I can move in there get shots on and then run away so that way it's kind of a hit and run ability and I do decent anti-armor or I could snipe an enemy hero down um, if you're fighting more of a horde then you want to use the heavy bolter which also has better range and better accuracy yeah uh, these guys have multiple different abilities you have uh, data link telemetry which uh, allows you to target a single unit it makes it so they can't evade uh, it ends up causing them to suffer more uh, armor piercing damage and the other options that you have here are the anti-grav uplift most players will use that on the first turn uh, they'll keep their land speeders together do that so then all of a sudden you get two movements you have a slightly bigger uh, awareness cone which is just a line of sight in this game uh, so you can move a lot extra distance and then these are hovering units which means that they can uh, go over obstacles and not suffer a movement penalty so it allows them to again cover a lot of distance the last unit here is the land speeder tornado I was not a big fan of these for a really, really long time. I'm like, okay, it gives me a little extra armor for less movement. I'm not super in love with these. But then I started to play more 
players and they really showed me the error of my ways. So if you're just wanting to run around and do hit and run tactics, yeah, the land speeder is great, especially with the multi melt if you're using it as an anti-vehicle platform. But the advantage of the tornado is the secondary weapon systems here. These are free attacks, okay? Uh, the, by default, it has the assault cannon, which is uh, 54 attacks with an armor piercing of 3 with an optimal range of 2. So definitely does decent damage against uh, kind of the light, uh, very early, medium uh, armored units can clear infantry out. Or what I really like to do is giving them a heavy flamer uh, because this does 10 attacks, so it does 60 to 90 damage per unit so you can effectively kill most infantry units with these guys and only cost 20 and they have a good movement so I can occasionally get them out of uh, out of uh, out of the way of getting a retaliatory counter attack and you could potentially kill up to two different squads using the heavy flamer it has a cooldown of two so you get to end up recharging that and then if you want to stack that with the multi melta you run in there attack uh, vehicle, then flame some of the screening infantry, pull it back, and then try to clear a way to get the other units in there to kill the vehicle. Um, can be highly, highly effective. So um, while I never use these when I first started, I use them quite frequently now. So I really, I really like the land speeders. I'm finding that a lot of other players really struggled uh, countering the land speeder play at the beginning of when this game was launched. But now a lot of players are getting a lot, a lot better with it now that they're really appreciating the strength of jump infantry. Because uh, if you just jump them in there, then you can't get these guys out because they'll end up triggering overwatch. And then these guys seem to get suppressed quite a bit, unfortunately. Um, but still uh, can be highly effective especially against other space marine players so uh, do with that what you will so i hope you enjoyed kind of this look at the different models here kind of what each thing has to offer us and my thoughts about using different kind of uh, my thoughts about how to use each one of these units here Hopefully it gives you an idea of how to build out some armies, uh, how to stack up some of these abilities to use it to be most effective. And then the big thing about this game is just play around because there are several different uh, squad and setups that you can use depending on the point values that can all be highly effective. Uh, so play around with it a little bit and see what you like. Let me know if these kind of feedback videos are helpful. If they are, I can do one with the other factions too. Uh, if it's just considered to be too basic information and it's not very helpful, um, then I won't spend the time to go through and uh, make this for the other factions. But um, hopefully this gives some idea because I find that with new players, they're still kind of having bad uh, force selections and not quite understanding how these different uh how to load do a loadout and things like that and it is complicated you know i'm still struggling with it and still working on uh optimizing my uh different point values against different factions too so thanks for watching i hope you're enjoying these videos if you are please give my channel a like and subscribe to me to post more content for you have a great day